So before that, in a map reduce, there were intermediate key value pair that was stored in a local file system of nodes. Okay. So in a temp slash temp uh, that we have already set our temp variable there. So in a temporary uh, temporary file and in a temp slash temp it will store your lo local data set. It will store your intermediate key value pair. In Spark case is different. It's stored in RDD which is kind of your collection of objects of Scala. So if I'm writing my code in Scala that means it will store in a dot Scala file. If I'm writing my code in Java so that will be the Java file. So this will be a collection of objects there and which is our already serialized. So distributed that uh, resident distributed data set is a fundamental data structure of Spark. These are immutable, right? Once you're created, you can't make some changes in it. But you can uh, you can transform a new RDD from the old one. Okay, you can you can become not a make a modification, but you are transforming that. You are creating a new RDD. Which is the uh, computed part of the older one, and uh, so collection of objects. Each data set of RDD is divided into logical partition. Okay, logical partition which may be computed on a different nodes of cluster. So how we how how Spark decide which partitions to compute where, how it contain all of the information about the dependencies, like which partition is dependent to which partition, and how it will calculate, because partitions are the sub part of the file. Okay, file is your, I have, I know only the file, I provided a file as an input, it automatically divides into partitions, how, you are, how it is computing your partitions, how you deciding your partitions, which one it is to compute, which one is a parent one because it is doing a lot of operations like a map, the mapping of informations, filtering at the same as, <coughs> as a pipeline operations, which is called a pipeline, uh, pipeline transformations. So already contain any type of uh, objects, which is a Python, Java, Scala, including the user defined classes. That means some of you have created a, your own classes and you are doing the computation over that. So you can also store that into RDD. I will show you that in the next slide what what is the internal of RDD, what it contain actually. So there are five main properties of Spark RDD. Yeah, this this you can write very important. Okay, <coughs> one is the partitions that we have provided a uh, static partition in the previous uh, example. So partitions which return an array of partition object that make a distributed data set. Okay, so your file is divided, split it into multiple objects, and that a unique partition ID is provided to your object. In case of RDD with a partitioner, the value of each index partitioner which correspond to get partition function. So this is a kind of hash partitioner is using, okay, which have a get partition function which take your key and value pair and your number of partition, okay, function for each key data set institution. So partitions number of partitions we have provided or automatically it will take okay the so number of so you can store your partitions in uh, in, in, in your executor or worker nodes but that partitions again not be splitted so that whole partition should be there in that node and should be computed only there 
in the in the executor or worker node where it is executing right now. And the second one is the iterator. So iterator, what it's doing is computing element of partition. The given iterator I provided for each parent partitions the function in order to compute each parent partitions. So that will this is a kind of a recursive function which take your partitions and a parent part, uh, iterator. And it will compute that in a recursive way. And in a third way, third property is the dependencies. There are uh, two different types of dependencies. One is a white and the narrow dependencies objects. Okay. Suppose I want to do only simple parsing of data. I have Wikipedia uh, text file. All of the text informations are there. And I have to just parse it. Okay, uh, pass all over the information and have to search only where how many times Java keyword repeated. <coughs> so it will only count that. So it's a very small one. So that is the narrow dependencies object. It don't require any external external shuffling. Okay. So where we are using a shuffling, that will be used in a white dependencies object. If we are not using the shuffling, that will be a narrow dependencies object. So returning a sequence of dependency objects, dependency let scheduler know uh, which RDD depend on other RDDs. Okay, RDDs contain number of partitions, iterators, dependencies, partitions, partitioners, uh, preferred locations. For data locality, so dependency return sequence of dependency objects, and dependencies let scheduler know this RDD depend on other RDDs, and how many type of scheduler are there? There are a two type of scheduler, which is a fair scheduler, okay, which work on a Robin round algorithm, and other scheduler is a first come first serve, which is a PIFO. First in, first out. So there are two type of scheduler, uh, which is used in a Spark, but you can extend the properties and you can define your own scheduler there. And there are two type of dependencies we have discussed. Narrow dependency de represent partitions that. So we are discussing that narrow dependency represent the partitions that depend on one or smallest subset of partitions in a parent. Is that not require any shuffling? What dependencies used when we are when a partition can only be computing by rearranging of our data? Suppose I want to do the reduce by key that required shuffling, and that is a part of why dependencies I require to do join between two data sets. That is an example of why dependencies objects. And it's also called shuffle dependencies, <coughs> where shuffling is required. And the fourth one is a partitioner, okay, which return a Scala options uh, type, which contain a partition object. If RDD has a function between a data point and a partitioner, which is associated with it, so this is a kind of a hash partitioner, and it is an optional. One. You can use it or not. This function return none. Or all already that are not a type of tuple. <coughs> Suppose uh, I have given you the data. I have given you the data, and some of uh, ambiguous data set also there in a key value pair. I do have a uh, word comma one. Okay, suppose one of word is ambiguous there and is a null, okay, and comma one, comma zero. So that will not, it will not compute that type of tuple, which is not in a key value pair. Okay, that is a zero. As in a value, it's a zero. It's a nothing. It's a null value. And key is suppose a word. So it's only. Return 
key value format as a tuple. And the last one is a preferred location. So preferred location means the data locality of partition, which node your partition of a particular RDD is stored. And specifically, function returns sequence of information which represent your sum of information of each node, okay? Which split is stored, and RDD which represent in an HDFS file. <coughs> Each string, the name of preferred location is a Hadoop name of node. So it contain the preferred location is to store the Hadoop name of node, which is in a uh, sum of encrypted format written. The specific name is given to particular node. And it have that particular, uh, it will return that particular node name when this function is called with that partition.